Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna take you guys on my journey in transforming this armoire into this amazing craft cabinet, somewhere where I can keep my Cricut machine and all of my crafting tools and that way it keeps it off of my kitchen table or my living room coffee table and in one place where it's nice and organized. I'm gonna start by spray painting the cabinet. I wanted to go with a white color because this is gonna be in my guest bedroom where all the furniture is white. I was able to snag these cans of Valspar spray paint from my local Ollie's for just $1.99. This was absolutely the most tedious step in this process. It felt like forever getting all of this spray painted given it was kind of a little bit of a windy day and I'm sure I probably shouldn't have been spray painting when it was so windy, but I really wanted to get this done. Got the cabinet doors painted on the front and the top. They also did the side here. And I'll show you from back here that I kind of started painting the inside, but not quite finished yet. Because this armoire was once used as a TV cabinet, it has a giant hole in the back to accommodate the older model TVs. And my solution for covering that up was to pick up some foam poster board and have it cut to size. I was trying to keep my cost down to a minimum and so I didn't want to have to worry about getting a large piece of wood cut down and then worrying about how I was going to screw that into the back of the cabinet. So this was my next best solution. And I covered it up with some wrapping paper that I got at Walmart after Christmas last year. I think I might have paid 50 cents for the whole roll and I like it because it's very farmhousey and rustic looking. I adhered it to the back of the cabinet using some command like strips. If this is something that you're interested in doing, they do have rolls of bulletin board paper at Hobby Lobby that you can purchase and it is very similar to like shiplap or rustic farmhouse wood. I wanted to make sure that I was using every square inch of this cabinet so that I would get the most out of it. And I found this really cute canvas organizer and metal organizer at the Target One Spot for just five bucks, except one was the wrong color. So I went ahead and spray painted that so that it would match. I plan on using these on the inside door of the armoire cabinet. And what I'm going to use to hang it is very similar to a command strip. There are hook and loop Velcro strips that have sticky backs. I buy these at the Dollar Tree. They are very good, just as good as a command strip and only a dollar. I went ahead and put it on the inside door of the cabinet and by the time I was done hanging that my other frame was dry so I went ahead and peeled off all the paper and tape and hung that one as well. For the inside of my other door, I'm going to hang this spice rack that I got on Amazon. I plan to use this to store the containers of glitter and the epoxy that I use to make um, glitter tumblers. I went ahead and pre-drilled some holes and then put in the screws that came with the spice rack. It was pretty easy. I did need to make sure, however, wherever I placed it, it would not get in the way of me closing my door. There was a little bit of trial and error there. I had to rearrange some things later on in the video. I made a trip to Ikea to find some organizational solutions for this cabinet. I found this. Each cup is sold separately. It's like a dollar and change. And I think the pole that they attached to was maybe like $2. However, it wasn't long enough and where I would have ended up adhering this would have been literally right in the middle of that giant hole. So I had to come up with a different solution. I wanted to be able to still use the cups. I went to Walmart and found this kind of old school curtain rod, which is long enough. It reaches each corner of my cabinet and I was able to adhere with screws, the bar and the cups sat perfectly on the rod. I also picked up some shopping bag organizers from Ikea to help organize my rolls of vinyl. It already comes with a sticky back, so I just stuck it right up there. Here's a photo of what it looks like all up with my tools and my cups. I love how it looks. I wanted to make sure that I had a light source in this cabinet, so I found an old fluorescent light that I had in my garage. I used some command strips to attach it to the ceiling. I didn't want to have to screw it in. Again, I was trying to keep the cost down, so I was looking for anything and everything that I could repurpose in this cabinet. All I did was pull the wire through the corner and down the back of the poster board to hide it, and it's plugged into a power strip that I've attached to the back of the cabinet where I can then plug in also my machine and my easy presses and, and have power to all the electronics that I need in this cabinet. 
I know earlier I said I didn't want to get a piece of wood for the back of the cabinet, but I definitely needed to pick up two pieces of wood because I wanted to put in some shelves. I do want to be able to have something that I can set my machine on, and then I also want to have like a pull-out desk feature in this cabinet. So I got some pieces of MDF that I had Home Depot cut down for me. I gave them a coat of white paint with some leftover paint that I had in my garage from like painting one of the bedrooms, and they definitely took two coats. They sucked up a lot of paint, but once they were dry, I went ahead and installed them. Here I'm just measuring and marking where I want my first shelf to be. This is the shelf that my machine is gonna sit on. It needs to be low enough so that it's under my shopping bag organizers holding my vinyl, but also low enough that it's not gonna interfere with the spice rack that I have hanging on the door. So once I've marked that, I went ahead and used these L brackets that I got at Walmart. The, well, I call them L brackets, but this package says corner brackets. So I'm just lining it up with the line that I drew earlier and then I'm gonna draw a little circle in each little hole so that I can go ahead and pre-drill these holes. It'll be much easier to install these corner brackets once the holes are pre-drilled as you can see here. Once I get all four brackets installed, I go ahead and dry fit the piece of wood that I had cut and or painted earlier. My husband helped me slide this into place and I was super, super excited that my measurements were correct and that my first shelf is indeed level and it worked great. It looked really good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just screw in from the bottom so that they attach to the shelf. As I mentioned before, I want my second shelf to roll out so that I have more of like a roll out desk feature where I can sit and do any of the weeding that I need. So I picked up some drawer brackets from Home Depot and here I'm just making sure that the bracket is level and then drawing the little circles where I need to pre-drill my holes. And then I'll go ahead and attach this to the inside of the cabinet. All right, so I got both brackets screwed into each side of the cabinet, and now I need to take the other half of these brackets and screw them into the wood, which is actually gonna be the part that rolls in and out and be more of like a desk for me. So I just brought this outside. Again, I just centered this to the side of the piece of wood and screwed in um, one screw at each end to make sure that it was correct, and then I went ahead and put in some additional screws so that it was nice and sturdy. Now that that's all done, I'm adding in some fabric bins that I picked up at Ikea. I'm pretty sure these were like $2.99 each. I really like the color. It really goes well with what I'm doing for like this farmhousey look. These plastic bins that I keep down here hold my scraps. One is for HTV and one is for regular vinyl. And then these little containers, there's four of them. I actually got these at the Dollar Tree. I don't know what I'm gonna put in them yet, but for right now, I'm gonna keep them there. I'm gonna keep my easy presses here on this shelf. And now, the whole purpose of this cabinet, placing my Cricut machine right there in the center, I'm glad that it fits, I was a little concerned. I do want to keep all of my items that I use for anything Cricut related in this cabinet, so I'm just going ahead and organizing all of the other items on the spice rack and in the bins and just making sure that I have plenty of space. When I was done organizing everything, I actually had lots of space left over, tons of room for growth. I needed somewhere to hang my Cricut mat, so again, I'm using these command-like hooks and placing a hook here at the bottom of this door where I can hang all of my Cricut mats. If you notice, I didn't really use anything command brand. Those are more expensive than getting the Walmart brand or even the ones from the Dollar Tree. When I thought I was done, I realized there was some empty space on the bottom of the left door, and I thought, I gotta do something with this. I gotta use every inch of space available. So I used some scrap wood, an old kitchen towel, and a towel from the Dollar Tree to create kind of like an ironing station. I'm gonna show you guys here now how I did it. I needed to have some kind of batting underneath the main fabric for this ironing board, but I didn't want to waste any money on like a whole roll of batting. And I thought, well, I normally just put a towel down whenever I'm using my easy press. So I used this like bar towel that I got from the Dollar Tree, so it was only a dollar. I cut it to try and cover the majority of the board. I did leave a little section uncovered, but that part is actually gonna be blocked by the spice rack that I have hanging on the door. So it's not necessary to have that cover. My easy press will never touch that part of the wood. So I just stapled it down so that it would stay nice and still. And then I just flipped it over and centered it to this old Ikea towel. I say old, but it's actually never been used. It's just been sitting in a drawer in my kitchen. I thought it went well with the farmhouse look. And so here you just see me stapling the towel down on one side and then I work my way down to the other side. And then finally I just fold up the bottom and staple the bottom upward so that it's nice and adhered all the way around.
Okay, so this is the door that I wanna put my new little ironing board on, um, but the board, this scrap piece of wood, was not really wide enough for me to put a hinge here. Um, I don't really wanna put a hinge here because this is just like a thin piece of flimsy, kind of like pegboard. And this is where all the meat is. I picked up some hinges at Home Depot. It was like $2 for the pair. And what I did was I removed this piece of wood, which was down at the bottom. And I moved it up here so that I could put my hinges on this piece of wood and then attach my new little ironing board. So you can see on this side, that piece of wood is still down there. I'm not really sure why it's there, but I've moved it. All right, so here I'm just kind of setting down my hinges and making sure this is where I want them. And then I'll go ahead and screw these into place. And then once these are screwed into place, I will then screw it to that support bar that you saw I moved on the door. Before we get to attaching this to the door, I just wanna show you guys here in this little clip here. This is a bracket that holds up like a closet pole and it was in the armoire when I first started painting it. I saved it and I'm gonna actually use this to hold the leg of the ironing board when the ironing board is in the up position. So again, just reiterating, I am trying to repurpose as much as I can and keep my cost down for this project. Here you see me just screwing in the first hinge and then using a level to make sure that the door is level before I go ahead and screw in the second hinge. And with that last addition that brings this conversion to a completion, I'm super excited the way this upcycle came out. Here are some pictures to show you what it looks like. I know that this is a little different from the videos that I normally do, but I was so excited with this project that I really wanted to share it with you, especially because I was looking into possibly getting one of the name brand um, craft boxes, but those were like running into the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And that is literally just not in my budget. So I wanted to show you guys how you could take an old piece of furniture from your home and make it work for your craft space. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody that you know that could use this information and possibly create their own little armoire craft box. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in my next video.